loophole got him a free New York hotel stay for five years. Then he claimed to own the building. Teen squatters taken into custody after a woman found dead in a duffel bag. Fire destroys vacant Lafayette mobile home where neighbors say squatter has been staying. LA woman sentenced to 20 years in prison for squatting scheme that saw her target elderly men take over their mansions and dispose of one victim's body after he died in the home. I'm not even joking, you guys. Every single one of those headlines is from like the last six weeks alone. This squatter situation in America is getting absolutely out of control, and we need to talk about it. You know, the United Nations estimated that there's over a billion squatters worldwide. I'm nice, but stern. I expect results, but I'm nice about it. Squatters, they're smart and they have the best attorneys. Some of you guys might have seen my last video about squatters where I featured a guy named Flash Shelton. Flash is a professional squatter remover that's known as the squatter hunter. And he started getting a lot of attention after he legally removed squatters from his mother's house in less than a day. One of Flash's strategies on how he gets a squatter out of a house is through this loophole where he actually can squat with the squatter until they leave. In today's episode, we're going to bring Flash on to talk about this squatter situation that's happening in this country. We'll get into why it's happening. We talk about exactly what he's doing to help. And at the end of this episode, we actually pull up a bunch of comments from my last video that you guys posted, and I review those with Flash together just to see what he thinks. This is an awesome conversation with an awesome guy. It's a bit different of a format than the videos that I typically put out, but believe me, I think you guys are gonna love it. I first wanna say before we even get into any of the questions is that I've been making these real estate news YouTube videos for like three and a half years now, and I've covered a very wide variety of topics. But like this topic, I it was unbelievable to me just how consistently on board everyone was with what you were doing. Everybody loves you. Everybody supports you. It's, it was amazing. Like it, that's why I was reaching out to you and had sent you so many messages. And I was just like, I have to talk to Flash. I mean, it's it's been great. I think I've been broadcast at this point in like 38 or 40 countries. And it's 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 a it's a worldwide problem. And and I'm, you know, appreciating all the love and the support. And the best part is when I get, you know, I have full support from law enforcement coast to coast and attorneys and judges. So that's, you know, that's great. And and now a governor and, and hopefully more. I made a comment in my video that said something like, I cannot even figure out who is in support of squatter rights, Republican or Democrat, doesn't matter, like who really wants these yeah. laws to exist. So do you, with all your exposure to this, do you have an answer to that of like, where these squatter rights originally came from and why squatters even have rights? You know, I mean, they're from the 1800s originally. So, so it, it, you know, people that want to blame Biden or blame Trump or, you know, it, it, it's ridiculous and shame on them. It originated uh, for settlers uh, in on undocumented land so that somebody could, you know, travel and set up for the winter on their way somewhere else and then start traveling again so somebody coming through could could stay in that house that you know might have already been built or put together or some sort of a you know and they could settle their you know wagons on a land or something without issue and it was never intended ever intended for you know to allow people to break into a home and you know into a residential maintained home it was never that intention you know our world right now and our country right now is just so upside down in so many areas and first of all squatters are not going and asking you what your political views are and using that as a factor in deciding if they want to move you know if they want to take over your home so some issues need to be handled non-politically and this believe me this for me is number one 
There were a lot of people in the comments section of my last video who were bringing politics into this conversation. So I hear what he's saying here, and I really like that Flash's stance is, let's keep the politics out of this. Squatters are no good for anybody. Next, we get into how this whole saga started with Flash's mom's house. And then I ask him exactly how his life has changed with all this newfound attention. You know, it's full time. It's so funny because I'm, you know, I still have my regular job. I still run the United Handyman Association. Every other week I have teenagers, you know, so I'm, I'm like somehow full time in all these different areas, you know, and, uh, you know, a lot of evenings and weekends. And, but for me, it's, um, it's all worth it. Um, I'm making a difference. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and I only have a short time left with my teenagers and, for me, I figure, you know what, most people, when they're worried about becoming an empty nester, then they're like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? And for me, it's like, well, I already have a plan. I already have, I already know what I'm doing. So, um, so yeah, so I, I go and do, you know, squatter stuff for me is uh, I do about three to four Zoom consultations a day. And, um, and that enables me to be able to work the rest of the day. Um, and then, Every other week when I don't have kids is when I go and I can go take care of a, a squatter situation. Um, oh. And uh, so I'm, you know, traveling from, you know, California, Nevada, New York, Florida. I've got an Illinois one coming up. I've got Seattle one coming up. Um, you know, I mean, it's Arizona. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. And, and the other thing that I want people to know is um, I'm, you know, we are in the process of building a squatter hunter army across the U.S. And um, I'm taking in, I, one of my last videos was asking people if they're interested. And eventually I will start training these people to where I can have teams that to where I can pop in here and there, but they will be trained to do this without me. The question I get into next is something I was dying to know about, and that is just if Flash is ever scared when he goes into these situations, because I'm sure some of these squatters can be kind of sketchy people, or they might even get violent. You know, every scenario I'm going into it, expecting them to be violent, expecting them to be a criminal, expecting them to be a drug user. I'm going into every scenario expecting the worst. Now, it helps me when I know who the squatters are to where I can run a background and I can, I can, you know, know exactly who's going, what's happening. But like when we start out after a zoom, if we decide to do the first phase, there's three to four days of that includes surveillance and getting to know their schedules. And, and, um, and I'm trying to get people to contact me before they approach them so that they have no idea we're coming. They have no idea you know, squatters are expecting homeowners to go through the civil process. They're expecting to have a confrontation, have the cops tell them, we had nothing we can do, you need to go through the civil process. Then they're expecting to get a three-day notice, then a 30-day notice, and a 60-day notice. That's what squatters are expecting to do. So what I'm doing is completely outside the box, and I'm basically surprising them to where they have no idea that I'm even in the picture. They have no idea, they're not expecting it. So when I have squatters that are living their lives and squatters are not homeless people, they're people with jobs. They go to the store just like you and I, they go to Costco, whatever. So if I can find a routine and I can find an opportunity when they're not in the house and they leave, they can make a fool of themselves in the yard all they want. And the difference between a squatter getting arrested and not is possession. So if I have possession and they're in the yard acting like a fool, they're the ones that are going to get arrested. So, so in best scenario, best case scenario for me is I'm fully prepared. I know who I'm dealing with and I can take possession of the house when they're out. That's the best case. It is crazy to think that a lot of these squatters are just regular everyday people. Like I cannot fathom having the nerve to move into somebody else's house and just start acting like it's my own. The other thing that I've been trying to express recently is what gives me the power of influence is 
the followers I have, the subscribers I have, the media attention I get. Because when I go into a situation, for example, that very first one, I didn't have all the followers. I had like 1,200 subscribers or something. But when I go in and I tell them, hey, look, you know, and, and even if they don't leave, then I have to just do a comp, uh, uh, an intervention. And I say, look, you know, I've got this many subscribers. Google my name. You'll see I'm all over the news. I could have news crews out here tomorrow. And I'm going to change your life. And from this day forward, if you don't leave peacefully and I show your face and your name and your location and your your social media links, you are going to be on not only on my national registry that I'm putting together, but it's going to be difficult for you to lease a property in the future. You're going to have difficulties because people are going to know that they can't trust you. So it's in your best interest to leave the premises. So this should be our reminder. Everybody should pause the video right now. Go to Flash's YouTube channel. Click the subscribe button. We need to get that follower count up because the more people that subscribe to his channel, the more influence that he has. Next up, we pull up my last video and we get into some of your guys' top comments to see what Flash thinks. So the, the top voted comment, like this, this comment has 5,000 thumbs ups alone, said, I had squatters. So we showed up in my house with two buddies, three 12 pages. We drank beer and hung out. They left in 10 minutes. There's a lot of people who seem to think the way you get squatters out is just show up, be very annoying, play loud music, bring a biker gang with you, bring some loud, aggressive dogs. There's a lot of that going on in the comments. But my guess is you get yourself in a lot of trouble if you take that approach, right? Yeah, I mean, I you know, it's... Um the the possibility of that going way wrong and it is so great you know you as the owner is not presumed the resident which means you cannot be on that property with a firearm so um you know a tenant and when i have a lease in a property so i'm i have concealed carry in like 38 states or something like that but even states that i don't have concealed carry most of them have laws that allow me as a legal tenant to carry a firearm on the premises. But um, if I was the owner, I wouldn't have that right to have a firearm on that premises because I'm not presumed the resident. So, you right. know, I would be very careful and I would recommend people do not follow advice like that because you know, if you pull out a gun or you're carrying a gun, you have to be prepared. There, there's a huge responsibility with, from that. You have to be prepared to use it. Another thing that came up quite a bit is a lot of people who are speaking about how it's so weird how if you show up to someone's house and you break in, you can get arrested for trespassing or burglary or breaking and entering. But if you show up at someone's house and you break in and you bring all your furniture with you, now you're allowed to just settle in and stay as a squatter. So like that, that, and that's something that puzzles me too. So how, what, where is the differentiating there, piece there? Yeah, there's, there's some truth in that, but it's an exaggeration of the truth. The truth is in, in my original situation, I could not prove when they broke in the back door. I couldn't prove that they broke in the back door. I couldn't prove when they entered the house. Okay. By the time law enforcement got there, it could have been a different group of people that broke in the back door. And then they just happened to go in later. I couldn't prove that. So yes, they set up furniture and everything. But if I would have had camera evidence or an alarm going off evidence showing them breaking in the door, they're arrested. Now, it's not going to solve the problem 100%, but cameras are going to stop the break-in squatter. Now, there are squatters that are getting in other ways that cameras won't prevent. For example, Airbnb squatters. Um, squatters that, uh, you know, that, for example, like my Hollywood one, answers a room for a, you know, room for rent at, shows yeah. up with a backpack, walks in, sits on the bed, I'll take it, 
The lady says, what do you mean you'll take it? I'll let you know. He says, no, you don't understand. I'm not leaving. She says, I'll call the cops. He says, go ahead. By the time the cops show up, he's emptied the backpack, put clothes in the closet, and oh, voila. Geez. You know, so there are situations where they will just start sending mail to an address that they want to take over so that when they, you know, when a cop shows up, they can show them mail. And ironically, I do the same thing. That's another way that I get them out. I start sending mail to that address before I go there. You know, basically, I'm just doing the exact same thing that they're doing back at them so yeah. that I can get law enforcement to tell them the beautiful words that I would like to hear at that time is it's a civil matter <laughs> and there's nothing we can do. See, that's the key here. The only way that you're going to get these squatters out of your house if you're a homeowner who's stuck in this situation or the only way you're going to get them out fast is by using the same laws and loopholes that they're using to squat but then using those laws against them. Now, another top comment from my last video was referring to that new law in Florida that basically makes squatting illegal across the state. Let's see what Flash has to say about that. Taking a stand and making a clear divide between squatters and tenants was is something that I've talked about from day one. And, um, you know, this enables law enforcement to go in and decipher if they're a tenant or they're a squatter. Up until now, law enforcement could, in, in, in most places couldn't even ask to see a lease because they were not allowed to decipher if it was real or not. So it would be a waste of time. So this gives them an opportunity to, you know, when a homeowner goes in and fills out a report to go and basically say to that squatter, potential squatter, a, you know, accused squatter that, um, you know, show us a lease, show us proof that you've paid rent. And if not, they can immediately arrest them. I really hope that we see more states follow suit. I think we're all in agreement that what Florida just put into effect is a good thing for everybody. Here at the end of our chat, I asked Flash just what we all as a community can do to further support him. And his response really just goes to show how much he's pouring his heart into what he does. I have a lot of situations where homeowners will consult with me, but they just don't have the money to fight a squatter, whether it's in court or having me do it so they're living with squatters years because they just can't do anything about it so i created a gofundme to um for people to be able to help victims um i've had recently some elderly that you know one of the big things that is happening is caregivers are becoming squatters and caregivers have access to their bank accounts so they're draining their bank accounts and um, so I've, I've run into a couple situations like that in the last few months. And um, so I have that set aside to help victims. And, and basically it's like every $5,000 potentially will get one squatter out. Huge shout out to Flash for taking the time to do this interview today. He's obviously a very busy guy, so I really appreciate it. Let's all go show him some love. I'll put all of his links down below. A link to his YouTube channel, his squatterhunters.com website, his petition that you can sign, his GoFundMe. Make sure to check all those links out and don't forget to hit the thumbs up button down below if you enjoyed this episode. I'll see you guys next week.